Samuel Maiterna, everything you need to know about the game, the ultimate guide. Let's go. This is where the game starts, same like in Eterna Noctis, around these pillars. And this would be the main hub map, the area where you're gonna rest and switch the time of the day, aka Royal Mansion, the Wall of Champions where you're gonna check your cards, and where you can check the leaderboards, the Forge where you can upgrade a lot of different things, and Yado's Hut where you can trade or start your run, whether to say open up seeds and start a new world. So the very first thing that's available for you once you start is straight up from the pillars to this fountain, or better to say the dark matter upgrades. What are the most important upgrades when you start the game? The most important upgrade of a dark matter fountain is Guardian Angel, because it basically gives you extra life. The faster you upgrade Guardian Angel, the easier the game is gonna be. Also, extremely good upgrade is the healer chest. You're gonna open a lot of chests in a game. Every time when you open a chest, you're gonna heal. It is extremely important, very important upgrade. The third very important upgrade would be swiftness your move speed, how fast you move around the map, there's a lot of movement, this is a fast paced game, and movement speed is also extremely important. By importance level, on spot number 4 would be healthy food, better healing when consuming food, when you kill enemies or when you open chests, they can drop food, which recovers HP, this is even better healing. On spot number 5 would be enlarged belt, that you max out as soon as possible, you get extra belt slots, or better to say, you can consume more items on your run. On spot number 6 would be Adamite Seeker, enemies can drop ingots on that, you need ingots for upgrades in a game. On spot number 7 would be Sapiens, enemies can drop saps on that, you need saps for upgrades. On spot number 8 would be straight crit chance to increase the chance that you can crit. The more often you crit, the faster you kill. Simple as that. On spot number 9 would be Spartan defense. You can take more hits before dying. Very important as well. And on spot number 10 would be accurate hit. Your crits will hurt more. Hence, you're gonna burst out enemies faster, no matter what weapon you use. After these 10 upgrades, you can go for the rest of the upgrades until you max everything out. Dark Matter Fountain is extremely important and one of the very first upgrades you're gonna have available when you start the game. Now we go to the second one. The second upgrade is right over here and it's the Seed Tree, Sep Tree. Call it however you like, it doesn't matter. With green materials, okay. See the greens over here? With them, you upgrade stuff on the tree here. This is your resources upgrades, resource accumulation upgrades. So let's start with it. The most important upgrade by far is dark arts. You will get more dark matter when you finish maps. You're gonna increase the amount of dark matter. With Dark Matter, you'll be able to upgrade faster on a previous one, on a Dark Matter Fountain. Okay, so this is number one that you should mix out. On spot number two, it's Forever Nature, so you can find Trees of Eternity on your runs and make your runs a bit easier. That would be your second upgrade that you want to mix out. If you want to encounter that, on spot number three, you will need to mix out Gambling, Death gives you a curse. Once you finish the curse, you're also gonna get a buff later about it. This would be your third upgrade. Max it out as soon as you can. On spot number four that you wanna max out is Expert Botanist. You're gonna get more saps so you can upgrade faster here in the main hub. On spot number five is unlocking mini bosses in a game that give great rewards once you kill them and they're gonna make your run easier. You're gonna get a better weapon or a better gem out of them. 
So, demonic cult is a must have as soon as possible. This is your upgrade number 5 by importance. On number 6 is a metal master, so you can get more ingots. I'll explain what you do with ingots later. Again, it's a material for upgrades and on spot. Number 7 would be ancient knowledge to get more runes, also a material that you need for upgrades. The next spot would be for consumerism, or better to say, on start of each map you will get to pick one out of two consumable items for free. Very important, it's gonna make runs easier. The next spot, spot number 9, goes to senseless, where you can roll a roulette of that additional time. Very good to raise your materials even further, okay, because you're gonna get stronger when you finish a curse, which means you're gonna go further in a game, the further you are on your run, the better the rewards, hence the faster you upgrade everything in a game. And on a final spot by importance would be seed plus, you get additional seed when you kill a boss on every map. After you're done with this 10, you can go out for the rest and max them out along the way. Pick what you like, but I told you what's the most important here. Now, from the tree, the next one we're gonna check is a trader. Trader usually has offer of the day where you just hold and you exchange resources. Okay, on the left side you can buy what you want and for uh, the items that you want to sell. So, for example, if you have, I don't know, golden ingots, 50 of them, and you don't need them anymore, you can trade them here for dark matter, okay, or for a resource that you need, it doesn't matter. Trader just serves the purpose of barter, so you can level up faster. This dummy, on a dummy, in the middle, you can unlock some achievements, test new weapons, test new gems, and stuff like that. Basically, it's a mini tutorial. Now, between the Dark Fountain and the Sep 3, Seed 3, there is the Forge. Forge is extremely important, because in the Forge is where you're gonna level up your sword, your skit, and your pistols. Or better to say, fast attacks, slow heavy attacks, ranged attacks. Swords, best on a basis. Skit best for the group of mobs and fast elimination, very good on bosses with add-ons. Pistols, the easy way out in a game, if you want to go further, pistols is the way to go, because you go from afar, shoot at enemies, if you play safe, you should live. Once you get to know a game a bit better, you can start playing with sword and a skip. Okay, but pistols is the easy way out. So what you should max out first? That's your choice. I recommend ranged weapons for those that don't have experience in a game. For those that want to make the game a bit harder and so on, I would recommend a skit because it's more fun personally to me than the sword. Sword is very basic. Now we're done with weapons. Now we're gonna go to the forge where you can change your outfits and upgrade your weapons and make them summon. Summon means ultimate ability on a weapon. To upgrade an ultimate ability of a weapon, you need to find a blueprint once you start playing the dungeons. Okay. When the blueprint drops, once you die, once you're victorious on your run, you come here in a forge, and with a blueprint, you get a new summon ability on a specific weapon. How they call it here? Ascension. You ascend the weapon to summon. Of course, sending a weapon to summon requires a specific amount of resources. Resources are on the bottom right, and you can see them all over there. Skull and everything else that goes below the skull. What are the outfits? They're there as cosmetic only. Basically how your main character looks like, okay? That's what the outfits are. Your choice how you wanna play. They also cost resources to unlock, so be careful. Pick one that you like stick with it until you unlock everything that exists in a game. Once you unlock everything that exists in a game, then you can start unlocking outfits, because they do not bring any stats, it's just for the looks. Now, what is one of the best weapons that you should aim for as a beginner? It's definitely Bloodsucker, because it recovers health back. Alright. 
as far as range weapons go. That's to recover health and learn how to play. The best damage that you can deal in a game is with a double long coat. As far as range goes, for skits, the wittering is absolutely crazy cool. And for the swords, I would say that a subtle edge is great for beginners. Okay, we're done with a seed, we're done with a trader, we're done with a forge, with weapons, with dark matter. Now we're gonna go to the royal mansion and I'm gonna show you how day and night cycle works and what changes. Once you enter the mansion, you're gonna enter your room, you're gonna lay down in bed, now it's dark, and then you're gonna transfer back to the forge. And here, instead of a trader, trader doesn't work at night, so instead of a trader, now you got a different trader here that sells maps. Okay, buy a map from a trader, it can be epic, it can be a legendary map, a mythic map, normal map, blue map, yellow map, it doesn't matter. Okay, random rolls, and you buy them for specific currency, the one you see above, blue circle, gray circle with a blue inscription in it. I believe the resource is called the room, okay? That, so far, is the only change from day to night and from night to day. During the day, trader. During the night, this trader. That's about it. The one is for the resource exchange, the other one is to buy maps from. From the pillars, straight up right, are influenced map upgrades. Or better to say, cosmic maps and arcana maps, card maps. This is like late game very late game and there is no specific thing that I can say about it. The more you play maps with influence, the more of these chaos resources you're gonna get. And you start leveling up. Influence maps are way much harder than classic normal maps in the game. We're gonna talk more about it later. I would say that influence maps are once you're done with a dark fountain, okay, with seeds, with saps, with resources with your gear now we're gonna transfer the gear as well let's go so where's the gear the gear is inside your mansion okay right over here you go into this room and this is where the gear is but we can do it during daylight because it looks better during daylight if you ask me uh, as far as your room goes where you can sleep in the upper left corner you can see trophies all the bosses that you killed and things you accumulated along the way I don't want to spoil that's where the trophies are. End of story. Let's upgrade. Let's see how upgrades for armor work. Okay. From armor, you can have helmet, chest armor, shoulders, boots, and I think these are bracers. And if they are from the same set, they're gonna start pairing with these lines that you see. Okay. What can you do with items? You can raise item level for specific amount of resources. All right, and you can raise items rarity, right? For example, green rarity, then it becomes blue, then it becomes purple, then it becomes uh, yellow, legendary, then it becomes mythic, purple. Okay, that's how it goes. It costs resources, how you should level up gear. First of all, what is the best to do? The best gear, to level up is usually gear like this that gives speed, movement speed, and crit chance. Those are the stats you want the most on your gear. You want to try and get the gear from the same set. Okay, if you play with Panther set, try to have all Panther items so they combine. Okay, don't go and leveling up, you know, different sets upgrading rarity and so on, it takes a lot of time to accumulate resources, a lot of successful and victory runs to accumulate resources, and it's quite expensive to raise them to maximum level, level 15, alright, so be careful when you upgrade, don't rush, if you don't know what to do, do not upgrade until you have a full set, then you're gonna upgrade level, and at the very end, you're gonna upgrade rarity of the item. That's how it goes with, with the gear. Now, how you upgrade a level? 
you upgrade level with his red currencies, okay, red crystals, and you upgrade rarity with skulls. Skulls are definitely the hardest thing to acquire in game. You need victory runs to accumulate skulls. Red blood shards, these red crystals, they're easy to get. But skulls, skulls is that's a different topic. You need to learn how to play the game in order to accumulate skulls. Now that we are done with everything that exists, the only thing that's left are cards. Influence cards and how they change the game when you play, okay? Once you decide to play an influence mech, cards will start appearing. Some of the cards will give you positives and some will give you negatives. And that's the beauty of the game. It can become extremely hard and extremely chaotic, but also very satisfying. The more you play influenced maps with cards, the more cards you unlock and the more passives for the cards you unlock along the way. So you need to rotate them non-stop until you unlock them all. It takes quite a lot of time to do it, but it is worth it and it makes the game 10 times more fun. Now, the only thing, that, so this is the leaderboard chart that's gonna be available on a full release. I'm playing the full release right now, but the leaderboard is not working yet. It's gonna start working from tomorrow. Let's go to the last thing that's left, and that would be... That would be the World Seeds, okay, where you start your run, the game. This is where you can check out all of your maps, you can order them by level, you can order them by rarity, you can order them by uh, type and so on. Uh, what is important to say here, skulls is the difficulty. You see there's 10 skulls over here, that means it's extremely, extremely hard. Okay, close to impossible, you die in one hit, modifiers are on the right side of the map. So you're gonna start on one skull. When you start the game, you start with one skull. Okay. And when you finish the game on one skull, maps with two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on will open up accordingly. That's the difficulty of the map. Now there's also a rarity of a map. Same like I explained for gear, for weapons and armor and so on. Rarity is also very important, okay, so the better the rarity, the better the rewards, but it's way much harder, so legendary map is 10 times harder than white map, this is white map, 7 skulls for example, and this is legendary map, 7 skulls, you can see the modifiers, okay. Modifiers are way much harder. Some of them are locked. Where you see the lock, it means modifier is locked. And when you see the eye, you don't know what it is. Okay, so there's a lot of things to learn. What is the negative modifier on a map that you should always try to avoid? Losing gold when you transfer maps. That's the modifier that's extremely irritating. Gold is called dogmas. So when you see lose 50% of dogmas when transferring to other world, it's the modifier that you really want to avoid because it's extremely irritating. Remember, coin money equal dogmas in a game. What is one of the best modifiers, positive modifiers, green modifiers to have? Modifiers that will reveal map and modifiers that will give increased luck. As far as the effect modifiers go, you can live if you have poison modifiers, bleed modifiers, burn modifiers, but you will die if enemies can freeze you. So the negative modifier that you want to avoid is enemies freeze for a specific amount of seconds. It's extremely irritating to get hit and frozen and you die in less than a second. Now, how should you play if you're a beginner? You should start with white maps, then with green maps, then with blue maps. So you do like uh, one skull white, then you do one skull uh, rare, then you do one skull legendary, and then you transfer to two skulls. Same principle, okay? White, blue, legendary or epic if you have one, until you learn the game and you can transfer to five skulls and, and above. That will be this part. On this part is modifiers. You can modify maps, change influence, change everything that exists about 
So how do you do it? Let's say we take, I don't know, we take this map, for example, legendary map, Port of Venetia. And we click on it. You can see a lot of different things here on the left side and how they can change. You can mutate the map and completely change modifiers, all modifiers at once. You can insert initial world, or better to say start, or better to say starting world, the world at which you want to start. And you know, if you have a favorite world, you're gonna use a modify initial world. You can add a random influence on a map. Now, how do you add a random influence? Uh, what are you doing? Influence map are when they're strange like this. You see Cosmos there, Dominion of Chaos. It means the map is influenced. Okay. This is map that's not influenced. Now, if you want to add influence, you remember what I said, you can add chaos, cosmos enemies, you can add cards, you can add will of the kings, influence, and so on. So how do you influence a map? You pick a map you want, for example, this mythic map, and you say add a random influence. So now it's gonna add will of the kings modifier, cards modifier, or chaos modifier. Let's see what we're gonna get. We got Arcane Legacy, that would be the cards modifier. And this map just got extremely harder than it used to be, but I can better rewards. That's what influences are. When I recommend playing with influences, after like 20 or 30 hours of game time, you should stick with normal maps, they're equally as fun, okay? This is mega late game with influences. You can add specific influence, you can add Will of the Kings, you can add Chaos, and you can add Arcane Legacy. We just added Arcane Legacy with random influence now. You can also remove a random influence if you don't want to play an influence map, but I don't see a reason why you should do it, because influence maps equals resources. You can release a dominant gene, you can add a dominant gene, and so on, you can reveal them better to say these are modifiers when it says genes it means modifiers negative modifiers are red positive modifiers are green on a map and that's the entire case everything that you need to know about the game i know it's a long guide but it's a big game there's a lot of things to do and upgrade once you decide to start a map all you need to do is stand in front of this green thing goblin whatever the hell he is pick a map insert the seed and you go to the world you start your run and you try to be successful for more resources and faster upgrades now i can't show in a guide and teach you how to play in a guide i released like 30 videos or so as well as i'm gonna release new videos with full runs in some of eterna with eight skulls and above Okay, hardest difficulties basically, so you can check out how I play. All the videos that I'll release will be victory runs, so you can see what I'm picking up for weapons, how I decide. There's a lot of tricks, okay, on a map when you want to leave a curse, break a curse, leave a chest, take a chest, leave food, take food. You know, you need to know all of those small tricks if you want to have a successful run. That's impossible to show in a guide. You just need to watch one full victory run so you can get the point of how you, you should play Samu Meiterna because it's not an easy game, it's actually a very hard game, a very hard roguelite. This guide was just there for leveling and upgrades and the order of how you should do things where I'm explaining you what's important and what's not. So basically you can advance faster. Now, if you enjoyed the video, if you found it helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you in Samu Meiterna. Check the videos, and thanks for watching.